A collection view is really similar to a table view. In my last video, I showed you how to make a basic to-do list app using a UI table view, which is a really good thing to use when you have a vertical list of data that you wanna be able to scroll through. But sometimes you're gonna to wanna to display many pieces of data in a different way. Table views work great for that single vertical scroll, but if you look at an app like the App Store, you have all these apps that need to be displayed in a single application, and they're laid out in these grids and lists that you can scroll through vertically or horizontally, and it provides a much better user experience in that type of application. And if we want this type of layout in our own applications, we can use something called a UI collection view, which is really similar to a UI table view, but allows for much more flexibility and control when it comes to how the items are laid out on the screen. In this video, I'm gonna show you the basics of UI collection views, and I'm gonna show you how you can add a UI collection view to your own application. So I've got a brand new single view application here, and if I want to start using a collection view, it's gonna be really similar to if I wanna start using a table view. I can just add the UI collection view over to the storyboard, and I'll just constrain this to the edges. And by default with a collection view, we immediately get a prototype cell. And these are much more basic than a table view cell. They don't have any labels or images or anything in them. It's just this blank view. So we'll need to create a custom cell, but we'll get to that in a moment. First, I want to populate this collection view. And to do that, it's the same as with a table view. I have to set the collection views data source to be an object. In this case, I'm going to use the view controller. So I set that to be the data source, and then I'm gonna to have to conform to the UI collection view data source protocol. So like I said, this is really similar to a UI table view. I have the number of sections method, number of items in section, and the cell for item at index path. And these work in the same way as a table view. But if I run the application now, I can see that it's actually being laid out in a grid instead of in just a bunch of rows. So I still have a vertical scroll, that's how I can see all of the cells. And right now I have two sections and 50 cells in each section, so this is a hundred cells. But the layout is completely different. And that's the main difference between a table view and a collection view. A collection view allows us to lay out our cells in literally any way we want. We can completely customize how these things are presented. By default, it lays it out in this grid structure, but we can lay it out however we want. But before we get into the layout of the collection view, I wanna just create a custom cell quickly, because right now there's not much we can do with the cell. All I've done is changed its background color. So I'll create a custom one that has a label in it, and then at least we have something to customize for each cell. So I've just added a label to this cell, and I've made this cell a type of my custom collection view cell class, which is just a subclass of a UI collection view cell, and just has that single label property. Then in the view controller, I'm just setting the text of that label to be the index paths row. So now we'll just see all of these numbers in each cell. And actually, I shouldn't use row here. Index path has another property called item. And in a table view, it makes sense to refer to each thing as a row because it's basically a collection of rows. But in a collection view, these items aren't really gonna be in rows that often. So we refer to them as an item and the value is gonna be the same either way. But in a collection view, we usually use item instead of row. So like I said, the collection view allows you to lay out items however you want. And it actually defers this responsibility to a completely separate object. So a collection view has a UI collection view layout object. So if we wanna customize the layout of the collection view, we actually customize its layout object, not the collection view itself. So by default, the collection view uses a layout object called the flow layout object. And this can be modified in code, or we can do this straight from the storyboard. So if we go back to the collection view, and go over to the size inspector, we can change the attributes of that flow layout object. So I'm gonna change some things over here. I'm gonna take away the estimated size and give it an absolute size. I'm just gonna set each cell to be 200 by 200. And then in the property inspector, 
I'm going to change the scroll direction to be horizontal. And now if I rerun this application, the cells are now 200 by 200, and instead of being able to scroll vertically like in a table view, I can scroll horizontally. And you can see they're laid out a little bit differently. They're laid out top to bottom instead of left to right. Before iOS 13, the UI collection view flow layout object was the main layout object that we would use to customize the layout of the collection view. But since iOS 13, there's a new object called the UI collection view compositional layout object. And this is a much more powerful, much more flexible object to use for the layout of a collection view. And it looks like this is the object we wanna use going forward in our iOS apps. So for this video, I'm gonna show you how to lay out your collection views using this new compositional layout object. To set up this layout object, we're gonna do it all in code and all in the view controller. So the first thing I need to do is create a reference to this collection view from my view controller. And then I'm going to change the collection views collection layout object to be a custom compositional layout object. And I'm gonna write a new function to set up this object, but to save time, I'm just gonna... So I've got a function that creates a new layout object, and then I'm assigning that layout object to be the collection views collection view layout object. And this function looks like there's a lot going on, but it's kind of simple once I break it all down. And I've stolen the slide that they used in WWDC to explain this so that I can show you what's going on. So the most basic component here is the item. It's the cell that exists in the collection view. And each item, each cell will go inside of a group. And a group is a one directional container for the cells. So it'll either be a horizontal container or a vertical container, but it'll only go one way, not both. And then each group will go inside of a section. And these are the sections as we've defined in the data source. So our app right now has two sections. Each section will consist of groups and groups will consist of items. And then the outermost layer is the actual layout object itself. And we always have to think in terms of these four things when we're working with the compositional layout object. So items are the cells, the cells go into a group, the group goes into a section, the section goes into a layout. And that's what our code is gonna look like. So right here, I've created an item, the item goes into a group, the group goes into a section, the section goes into the layout, and the layout is what I assign to be the collection views collection view layout object. If we look inside this function, we're just gonna see a bunch of rules for how we want the layout object to lay out our cells. And right now, I'm just gonna go over some of the basics of this stuff and show you a couple of different layouts that we can make with this. But for more information on all the different pieces that are going on here, I'll leave links and information in the description of this video for you to check out. So at the top here, I'm creating the rules for how the item should be laid out. And I have to specify a size for each item, for each cell in the collection view. But I can use these special dimensions, like fractional width and fractional height, to say that I don't want it to be an absolute width like 200 by 200. I actually want it to be 20% the width of its container and the full height of its container. And its container is that group. And then the next thing I do is define the group size. So I'm gonna say that the group should take out the entire width of the container, but that it should actually only be 50 points high. Uh, and then we can create the group using the group size and the cells that go in each group. So we'll be able to fit a bunch of cells in a group, and then a group will go into a section. There'll be a bunch of groups in each section. And we can define things like the space between each group within the section, the spacing between each cell within a group, uh, and the space even between each section within the layout. So let's run this and see what the new layout looks like. And here we have each cell that is 20% the width of the group and 50 points high. And all of them are laid out in the collection view like this. And this kind of seems like a big chunk of code just to get that grid layout. But we get so much flexibility and control by using this type of object that it's really worth getting used to how this works and practicing creating layouts using this compositional layout object. One really cool thing about the compositional layout object is that it's really easy to change the way the cells are laid out based on pretty much any criteria. So right now I'm gonna show you how to change the layout 
based on the current section that the cells are in. So we can have this top section appear differently to this bottom section. And I want it to be laid out differently whether we rotate the iPhone uh, to landscape mode or back to portrait. And again, to save time. So this function is significantly larger now. There's a lot more code in here, but the ideas are still exactly the same. I have an item, an item goes into a group, a group goes into a section, and the section goes into the layout. Uh, the way I'm creating this now, though, is a little bit different. So before I was creating the layout at the bottom of the function. Now I'm creating the layout at the very top of the function and passing in a closure to this constructor function. So this closure is going to get called every time the layout object needs the information from inside of here. So this could be every time that you scroll into a new section or when the device changes its size. So right at the top here, I'm checking to see which section I'm currently in. So if I'm in the first section, I'm gonna create a bunch of rules that are specific to that first section. And if I'm in any other sections, I've created uh, another set of rules. So the top section, I'm now making all the items just 100% of the width of the container. So it's gonna look more like a table view. And at the bottom, I've made it a little bit different. I've laid this out using a vertical group and constrained its height to be 200 points. We're gonna have vertical groups that are only 200 points high. And then I'm gonna be able to scroll horizontally within that section. So if I run the app now, we should see a full width row, kind of like a table view on top. These are all the top cells, the first section cells. And then the second section has them laid out like this so I can scroll through them this way. And again, this code is really similar to the code I had in the beginning. There's just a few more rules in place to make the layout work that way. And another really cool thing is that if I turn this landscape, the top section turns into two columns. So in portrait, it's just one single column, but in landscape, it's two columns. So this can really take advantage of the wider width we have on iPhones when they're turned into landscape. And the code to achieve that is also really easy. So there's this environment property passed into the closure here, and we can use that to actually get the content size of the collection view. So I'm just saying if the width is greater than 500, we're gonna turn the columns into two rather than one. And then I can even just pass that as a parameter into this layout group constructor, and then my item dimensions can stay the same. And then I don't have to calculate the item dimensions. I just say, use those dimensions, but make sure I get this many cells within each group. So there's a lot of cool things that you can achieve with this layout. Another thing I wanna mention is how you can get auto-sizing cells. A lot of the time we're gonna have content in our cells that is gonna to need to grow or shrink, which could mean that the cell itself needs to grow or shrink with that content. Uh, one example of this is something that I see a lot in applications like YouTube and Instagram, is that there'll be some big thumbnail image on the top of a collection view cell. So I'm just gonna use a UI view to show this. And basically it will take up the entire width of the cell but its height will kind of be determined by maybe the content within it or determined by the width of the cell, not the height of the cell. So I can demonstrate this by constraining this view to the edges of the cell and I'm gonna set its aspect ratio to be so that its height is half its width. And I'll just change its background color so we can actually see it a little bit better. And then I'm gonna constrain the label to the bottom of that and to the bottom of the screen. So it just sits in the lower half of the cell. And now I'm not really gonna be able to define the height of the cell anymore. If I say that the width of the cell should go all the way to the edges, the height is gonna vary depending on what I have in the label and how big the width of the screen is. So back in my view controller, I need to tell my layout object that I actually don't know what the height is gonna be, and I need that to just be figured out when the cell is actually loaded onto the screen. So to do this, we can use a height dimension that is estimated. So I'm just gonna put in a guess here, what do I think the height of the cell will be? I don't know, maybe it'll be about around 500 points. And the value that you put in here really doesn't matter too much, because the layout object is gonna use this value initially and then completely adjust the height depending on what the contents of the cell is. So now if I run this with the estimated height being 400, it will figure out the exact height it needs to be depending on if it's landscape or portrait. 
and it will always just be the correct height based on those auto layout constraints. So we can still use our auto layout constraints to get that uh, dynamic height within each cell as long as we set that height to be an estimated height. That's it for this video. That's just a really quick introduction into UI collection views and the compositional layout object. Check the description for more details and links about all of the topics here and stay tuned for more videos on iOS.